relationship of my dad and mom taught me. That's what we'll be looking at this morning. We'll be learning our marriage tips from this experience that I've learned. Put on screen for us Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1 and verse 2. Once it's on screen, we all will rise up to read together. After that, we also read John chapter 1. We read that in the Elebu church this morning from verse 1 to verse 5. I will show you something from it. Let's be on our feet in honor of God's word as we read together. Everybody rise. Let's rise. Let's rise. Let's rise. Thank you for honoring God's word. After the count of three, can we read? One, two, and three. My son. Pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ears to my understanding. Verse 2. Lend your ears to my understanding. Let's go. That you may preserve discretion and your lips may keep knowledge. Remain standing. For John chapter 1, 1 to 5. John chapter 1, 1 to 5. Now the author of the book of Proverbs is King Solomon. He wrote King Solomon and he was writing it as an instruction under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now let's read one, two, three and let's go. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Verse two and the word was God. Let's go. He was in the beginning with God. Verse three. Verse three is the pointer where I want us to really get something. All things were made through him and without him, Nothing was made that was made. That's Jesus. Everything was made through him. Without him, nothing that is made was made. Now verse 4, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Wait, in him was what? Life. And that life was the light of men. You know, when you are confused, you turn on the light, it becomes clear. Now, I, I'll be preaching from the light that the life of God gave me today. You know, when you are born again, you begin to see things from the angle of God. Hello? You don't think like ordinary humans anymore. That's why Jesus said, he said, the life, that's the life, sorry, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, you can't understand wisdom if you are not born again. The light you need is in Christ. Now, sit down. That's why this morning, you know, I was praying throughout last week and asking the Lord. Today is family Sunday again. Father, which direction do you want me to take the church to? What do you want to speak to the people? Because a lot of you don't understand that the family that you came out from is supposed to be your success lesson to raise your own family. I come again. The family you came out from, that most of us don't look back. We don't look at the, the, the family we came out from to gain the lessons, you know, that we used to run our own families. Some of us are already repeating the mistakes of our parents. And listen, I always tell people, if you are not born again, you cannot have the life that can become the light, that can make you see the things that you should see. Now, that's why when God told me this, I took my time to prepare this short story and I will teach you six lessons from it. Now, this short story is the true life story of my father and mother's marriage. Now, listen to me as I read before I begin to preach. Hallelujah. My dad died at the age of 75. While my mom died at 65. They were happily married for about 12 years. Before their marriage got broken. Their marriage produced four children. Now that I'm born again by the Spirit of God, I can clearly see from their lives the lessons and the errors that we should learn from. Number one, my mom died untimely. The doctor said it was cancer. But by the spiritual counsel that I received from God, I discovered she, she died from the feeling of not being loved. She wanted more love, but nobody could give her the kind of love she was looking for. This was how a marriage story began. She met my dad accidentally 
as a prisoner of war. She was captured by him during the Biafran war that took place in Nigeria. She did not have a choice either to say yes or no. With the agreement of her parents, she went into the marriage, into marriage with a man of a different culture and religion. When she saw that she could not get she could not have her husband to herself alone, she opt out of the marriage and focused on her children. She showered everything she had to raise her children, but still discovered that her children were, uh, uh, sorry, that as her children were growing up, they were becoming very far from her. Her female children found love with their partners as well as her male children. This made her cry severally without having anyone to promise her the kind of love she wanted. This feeling made her nag to the point that everybody thought and concluded that she was a tough and difficult woman. This she nursed until the day of her death. Now listen, the reason why God showed me this story, I don't know who that person is in our midst. God showed me this story because of somebody. Now, and this is what I learned from my mom. To all her days of, of being on earth, she was always seeking for somebody that will give her the kind of love that she expects. Look at how her marriage started. It was not that she was in love with the man. She was captured during the Biafran war. She had no choice. An army captain came to capture an Igbo woman. Her family supported because they didn't want to die. Yes, dowry was paid. She left her home in Abia State to stay with my dad then at Makodi. Giving back to children, but she didn't see the love. Not knowing that my dad, being a Yoruba man and to an Islamic man, was a man of many wives. She wanted a man for herself, but she couldn't hold. Then she decided to extend that love to say, okay, if I couldn't find it with the husband, let me try to find it with my children. Especially I that happens to be her first son. But she discovered, I can still remember all her tears those days. When I come back from the place of work, I'll meet my mom crying. I'll go to her, try to console her. She will, you know, she will want to hold my hands. You know, and we were not raised that way. I'll be looking at this and what's this? What's the meaning of this? You know, what's the meaning of this? I didn't understand. It was after her, her death. In, in fact, I, to, I told myself, if I meet her in heaven, though there's no, nothing like that in heaven, I will prostrate and tell her, Mommy, I'm sorry. I didn't know that what you were looking for was love. But to me, I was feeling she was just too possessive. She wanted me at all costs, you know, to stay around her, to be talking with her at night and things like that. Maybe you are here, you are that type of person. God is sending me to you today. I remember how even when I was married, she would cook and call me, Pastor, come over. I've cooked your favorite. But I have a wife to love at home that I've cooked for me. So most times, at times, I turned down her, her invitations and things like that. We didn't know that what she was looking for was love. When she traveled to stay with my elder sister in South Africa too, you know, she had several misunderstandings with her husband because my, to her, my sister's husband was a barrier. What was she still looking for? Love. I can still remember the call that my sister called. Pastor, Pastor, a way one mommy, a one mommy, me more. Shove that let me run it. You know, I can still remember. And I too didn't know what was going on there. I, I gave her the phone. Mommy, I'm a born in Nigeria. It had shit to. It had shit to. She moved out of their house, rented her own house, you know, was living. But what she was still looking for, she didn't find. She decided to accept the call of God. You know, join church. She still could not find uh, 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 the love. Because when she becomes too close to her pastor, the pastor's wife is angry. Does mommy Benson want to take my husband? Does she want to take my place in church? You know, all she was looking for, nobody understood that. All she was looking for was love. That's why when the doctors told her she had cancer, now was when I realized that it was not cancer. 
it was the pain of the heart you know that kept on degenerating until it became something else and god is sending me to somebody today i wrote here learn this learn this if okay before i come to the lesson i wrote what i wrote i remember even after i had married i wrote my experience here if I, I still remember how those days my mom would follow me to every exam i was telling my wife and children when i went to a, for nms exam uh nigerian military school it was also take place in zaria so we had the first training at command here mokola she was outside waiting to hear how far so as i got out to say how far i said mommy they say i'm too fat because i was so fat and they said this one is too fat he can't run push him aside she took she followed me to government college exam Obomo Shaw. i still remember I got to government college. We did the exam. They said, well, the only available place is not in Ibadan. She said, no, I won't leave my son. She followed me to do command secondary school exam at uh, 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 Omi. I passed the exam. They said, but I must, I must go to Joss. She said, no, I can't leave my children. I didn't know until now that me, myself, I'm growing up. I begin to realize that all my mom was looking for was the love she lost at the foundation. Can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? Everybody listen. You must learn to find joy outside people. I come again. If you want to live long, learn to find joy outside people. Your husband cannot give you joy. Your wife cannot give you. There is nothing that you think you hold that is permanent. Learn to find joy in something that is not attached to anybody. That's one thing she didn't have. Because some of you are saying, as long as I have my husband, your husband will die one day. There is nothing we have that is permanent. You must learn to find joy outside people. If you can find joy outside people, you will have permanent joy. That's what she didn't have. Her joy was either looking for an husband that will give her. She didn't give her. She, the husband didn't give her. She was now looking for joy among her children. We were four, but the four of us, in fact, was in it when God now called me and gave me a calling to ministry. That was another disconnection. I remember my mom, we always work as my secretary. When a girl is coming to see me and she put on a dress that looks funny, my mom will send them back from the entrance. She was, she was just there, but I wasn't there. There is no I could be there. Learn to find joy in yourself because there is nothing you have that you, call, that, you, that, that you call your source of joy that will stay with you forever. Please, notice this. If you think I'm lying, I'm telling you the truth. There is nothing you call a source of joy that can stay with you forever. Now my children are growing up. I've been trying. At times I wake up, I look at Tony, I weep. I'll come back. Is this girl going to school? I tried and tried and manipulate for Eniola to be at home, be going to school from home. Because, but she will soon go and serve. There is nothing you call a source of joy that can stay with you forever. Understand that. Or else you might die untimely. Don't you think that, young, do you think that young people don't die? Young people die now. It's not old people that, only old people that die. If you think, okay, the source of my joy is my job. If, you do, if uh, uh, they don't sack you one day, body may not allow you to continue. Before I came here now, I came to, went to visit one of our members in the hospital. Now, I was there in the hospital. I was asking, what happened? They said he collapsed in his place of work. I was now asking the wife, what, what happened? The wife said he has been treating malaria since. They tell him, oh, rest, rest, brother, rest, brother. But that will say, no, I have to go to work. I have to go to work. Now, I ask him, now that you are on this bed, who is at work? Any, everything can betray you. Everything. I come in. Everything can betray you. But it's only God that can stay with you forever. Am I communicating somebody? 
Lasting joy can only be found in your relationship with God. Show me Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 and Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 to 19. I want to show you something. Jeremiah, uh, sorry, Nehemiah 8, 10. Let's read together on your seat. One, two, three, and let's go. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portion to those from whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow. For what? For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Can you see that? I didn't say, then he said to them, go and meet your friend. No, no, no. Eat. He said, you take, enjoy the wine. A lot of people are suffering of hypertension today because they are expecting too much from either their spouse or their children. But from my parents, I learned. My mind is pre prepared. Now I'm, I'm beginning to know that no matter how much I love my children, they will leave me one day. That's why I told all our mothers, hear me, don't raise your children with the whole of your life and not have a life of your own. I was talking to one of our, one of our, our members uh, uh, in, the, in my office. It was it on Thursday or Wednesday we had that meeting? The man was crying. He was crying. He said, I'm putting all my money on my children so that they can pay me back in the future. I said, you have wasted, you have wasted your investment. Uh, he said, Pastor, what do you mean? I said, it's waste of investment. Do you think you're, before your children will remember you, they will not eat first? He will first eat now. If you want to pay house rent, you will first pay house rent. It is from leftover, they will remember you. I say, see, as you are investing, I'm not saying don't invest, invest, but don't forget yourself. Second scripture. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Don't forget, the source of strength is joy in God. So, get your joy from God, not from your husband, not from your wife, not from your children. Nothing you have is permanent. Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 to 19. Shagada baraba, shagada basket. Be fast, we don't have all the time. The day my mother died, I was here. She was in South Africa. When my sister called, Pastor, pray. Pastor, please be praying. And I said, what happened? Mommy just collapsed now. But one week before I died, uh, my mother died. She called my wife and started speaking parabolically to my, my wife. Just told you, Pastor. I started speaking parabolically to my wife. Uh, pastor's, pastor's daddy was a good man. He was a good man. I started telling us plenty things. Not knowing that she was going to die the following week. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vines. Because some of you are always looking. I want a husband like Pastor Prince Will. Your husband cannot be like Pastor Prince Will. You better agree on time. Or some of you are saying, I want a wife like mama. Your wife cannot be like mama. Oh. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vine, though, though the labor of olive may fail, and the field yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no head in the stills, what will now happen? Verse 18, yet I will rejoice. In where? In the Lord. Why will he rejoice? Because God has been his source right from the beginning. That's one thing so many of you don't know. That's why you're always feeling disappointed. Ah, oh mommy, oh mommy, oh mommy. Pastor, can toy, can she my husband? Oh mommy, you touch me. Eh, what you miss a lot of foundation. You want to bat it, take ball. Man, she a mistake. It's not what you to make. Begin to prepare your old age from now. If they bring anything in the future, you know that it's a plus. You didn't hear me. Oh. So that if they bring anything in the future, you will know that whatsoever they bring is just what? A plus. Not that you will spend your whole life waiting. Then some people will even go to the point of, ah, my ship will for money. I won't call no kobay. 
Oh, Tony, I want it to wise up ni. Ke mommy kin to da yin lo e je kin so wo school mommy na. Eyin le ti wise up n gba yen. He said, no, even if the fig tree does not blossom, he says, see, I will rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because God has always been my source of joy and strength. So, every married person here, your wife should not be your major source of joy. Your husband should not be your major source of joy. I know that it's only, you are only trying to psych them. When you put your wife's picture and you say, my only source of joy, it's just a psyching. But if it is true, change. She cannot be your only source of joy. Because if anything happened to her, it will happen to you too. You will die too. Going to three years now that Dunsin Oyekon's wife died. Did he die along? He's still singing. He's still worshipping God. Hello, me are backsliding to here. Because they never got their priorities right. Look at those ladies in psychiatric hospital. Why did they, some of them ran mad? They said the boy disappointed me. Are you mad? Why will a boy disappoint you and you run mad? Is something wrong with you? Listen, get it right. Don't make the mistake that up till now, up to as I'm talking to you, I still cry for my mom. Because I always still tell myself, I didn't give this woman the kind of love that she was looking for. But could I give her? I didn't even have that kind of love to give her. Because even the kind of love she was asking for, she, she wanted me to be married into her own house so that we always still be together. Will I have been able to manage it? Show me my mother's picture. She's a very beautiful woman. Thank God for your spouse. Thank God for your children. But please don't let them become the source of your joy. Don't let them become your source of joy. I wrote this one down too. Pick notice, write it down. Love yourself in such a way that people's reaction to you will not matter. You do hear me? If you are clapping, you better clap. Can you give yourself a hug now? Hug yourself. I just love me. I love me. Yeah. Love yourself in such a way that people's reaction will not matter to you. You pass, somebody his, and you are bothered. You don't yet love yourself. Oh, oh, it's like they are talking about me. It's because you don't yet love yourself. You know, I sat down, I was considering most of the, my mother was a giver. But I discovered that she gave, not because she wanted to give. She was giving because she wanted to create an expression, an impression. She wanted people to love her. Once I remember one day, my mother was cooking soup with all kinds of meat. And pastors, four pastors walked in. They entered our house. My mother went to carry the pot of soup. We, the children, we were crying. And she just turn it into a dish and say men of God eat I went to the corner I didn't know I would even eventually become a pastor I said look at them thieves <laughs> and we used to speak pigeon in our house the person never chops this morning they just come I don't know who tell them say with the cook soup now <laughs> do you know that my mom died they didn't attend that barrier I told, I called all of them. She invested her money on them. Two of them wanted to travel out. My mom gave every document and called the people over there. They hosted them in their house. Love yourself. Let me preach to your neighbor. Say, love yourself. In such a way that people's reaction to you will not matter. Take note of this number two again. Don't give to anyone what you haven't given to yourself. Anything. You can give to God, but don't give any man anything you have not given to yourself. The Bible didn't say love your neighbor more than yourself. 
He said, love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't know how to love yourself, how will you know how to love your neighbor? These are lessons I learned from my mother's mistake. I also wrote this one down. Admire yourself so well to the point that people's mockery will not be able to reach you. Admire yourself so well to the point that people's mockery will not reach you. Let them mock. You admire yourself so well. That's why today I always tell my children, when they begin to play some demands, I say, look at me, Eniola. Look at me, are you Ask them, I used to tell them, are you Are you a mini moa? Uncontin bad luck, but I chiffon you, my shay. But are you in Connie Moa? So that I don't want to die. Maybe you are getting angry. In summary, I learned from my mom why I shouldn't I, why I should love myself first and most. I learned the importance of finding joy with myself. Don't miss all these words. That in summary, I learned from my mom why I should love myself first and most. And two, I learned from my from uh, that experience the importance of finding joy with myself. And I've told you the source of that joy is in your relationship with God. What did I learn from my dad? I told you from the light of Christ that Jesus, of the life that Jesus gave me, I saw this light. Three things. Number one, yes, he was not a bad man. This is what I saw. He was so consumed with respect for his mom to the point that he, dis, he, he decided to allow his mom to run his life. I remember when I was young, when my grandmother, my father's mom, was telling my, my mom, Why? Tori Tieko Movida Kufun La Sisi Koyagbo. So my mom, my dad was just impregnating ladies, having children, and not being faithful to one man because of an encouragement from the mom. Train them to become responsible. Raise your male children to be responsible. Stop intruding into their lives when they become mature. If you raise them like the way you, you are raising your calculator, they will depend on you for life. Oh. They will always come back to you, Mommy, 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 how many children should I have? Hey, mommy, 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 my wife, my wife is not around. What do I do? My wife did this. What should I do? Now, it started with respect, but later it became something else. He allowed it. Yes. But the mother capitalized on it. That's why I'm speaking to every mother in this service. Once your children are married, allow them to lead their lives. Stop intruding into their affairs. Every minute you have carried your bag. I'm going to my son's house. I'm going to my son's house. Ah ah. You don't get I. Imagine you eh, you want to enter again. They say, oh, "Mommy, you are here again." I thought it was last week you left. Have you forgotten what the scripture say, says? Let's go to the Bible now. 
is there in Matthew chapter 19 verse 5 therefore a man will leave his father and mother and do what and cleave to his wife let them cleave I wrote here for mothers teach your children when they are young from their tender age how to be how to make reasonable choices and when they grow up allow them to make those choices you have taught them to make i can't imagine why you as a mat a full grown man will give back to a child and you are waiting for your parents to send names Even after God created the earth, he left Adam to name everything. Adam called them names. And Adam looked at his wife and said, this shall be if. But you are waiting. My father is bringing name. My mother is bringing name. You don't know the sources of those names. You now stand aside. It is the right of my daddy. It is not the right of your daddy. They, that child is their grandchildren. You are, you are the father of that child. One of my sons in church, he gave back to his first child and called me. Daddy, I'm now a father. I said, praise God. Please give me the name for him. That's possible. I said, me give you a name for your son. It's not by Blicker. He says, I don't understand. I said, it's not by Blicker. He says, I'm giving you the one. I said, no. God did not name anything for Adam. Whatever name you give him, I put my blessing upon him. That's how it should be. And you know why some of these mothers are intruding? It's because they spent their own life raising those children. Don't make that mistake that your parents made. Though. It's like these mothers are angry today. <laughs> Emma binu eme call. Tell me Olorun ba ti gbe mi wo bayi mi na o kin ye mi. Emma ba mi ja o ni ke ba ja. Emma le enrich ya ke ile ai ke ni ma pada desi. Ile ai ke ko le ma desi eni ara nbe o. You better begin to love your or David now. Olorun fe tin ni e. And be united to him. Cheri atewa atadun gbugun won sin lo. Awa ke yan ti di brother David. Good night, good night. I don't need to Ah, there's one I will tell you when we get to this point. So, mothers, begin to stay clear. And those of you that are young mothers that are coming, don't spend your life raising those children. As you are raising them, be planning your life, be planning your old age. So whatsoever they bring at their old at your old day, whatsoever they bring, they will know that they are coming to tap blessing from your mouth. That when they come, you won't mind worry. Any other? Put it on the table. That you need there. I'm telling you, do you know that till my grandmother died? Nobody goes to the pot of my of soup in my father's house. Only mama. Only mama. Go see our control duro. No ma, no wife could stay. Because you have mama to contend with. He built five flats. His own flat is number one up. Mama's own is number one down. Even when you come to see my dad and you get to his flat up. He will ask you, Sheti Dodo Mama, Rara, Pada Loko Loki won, Koto Pada was okay. Can I go on? So stop treating your matured boys as babies. Number two. From my dad, I discovered that polygamy 
will make the man, husband, lonely at night time. Ha! My dad has plenty wives. Sherry, he don't people look at me, you know. He lay on the road. Oh man, Koba or Kuni, any or do I lay? Do you know why? The mothers will go to their their children. With all of them will be with their children at the last night time because of this mentality of battles. So only Kalukuma close more yet here, more yet here. Do you know that at the age that my dad was, he was sick in the hospital. There was no wife. All the children have taken their moms. So who will stay with him in the hospital? Ah, I remember. I was in the office here when they called me. Pastor, Pastor, my, my sister that called me. Pastor, Pastor, my da daddy, daddy, she collapsed. I said, where are you people? They have referred us to Adi your hospital. I drove down. As I got to the Adi your gate, but I gave are you sure you are here? Open your ears. Let me tell him to open his eyes. What did I say last? As I wanted to enter Adi your hospital, I met Dr. Yeniro. Pastor Kilenwa, he said, I said, my dad is here. Where? I told him, I don't know. They called me just now. He said, I can tell you where he is. He arranged for three other, four other doctors plus him making five. I was going like a king. I got there with five doctors. They entered the ward. The nurses stood up. My dad was in coma. He ordered for certain things. I quickly went to pay. As they put those things on him, he came back to life. That was where I got the idea that made us to say not to take Baba to Adioyo. When we now got there, instead of them to tell us that he needs an emergency surgery, that he is his, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 what do you call it, prostrate. They kept us there till in the evening. In the evening, they now, they now said, uh, uh, Pastor, we have to refer her. We can't, hand, we, can, we can't have to refer him. We can't handle him. As we wanted to go, one of the daughters from another mother said, Pastor, she will know what you say, she needs. If you want less, be a big one. I'm telling you, true life story. Ah, uh, 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 as we got to UCH, so I preached to him, he gave his life to Christ and allergy. He gave up. I went in to quickly show the doctors. The doctors look at it. They said, gave me another doctor. So he died in the car. The doctor now said, this man would never have died. What did you go to do at that animal place? That is not an hospital. That place is a cage where they kill people. I said, eh. He said, how are you to him? I said, it's my dad. If I tell you the number of people they have wasted their lives at that place, I'm alive, that's why I don't want to say it. He said, what this man needed was an emergency surgery. For the urine that I have stored in him to come out. That was the only thing he needed. Now, this result shows that he's not cancerous. There's no cancer in it. This man wouldn't have died. But now, I want to be ni daji. But I love you. But if you want to move, want to want to move, you are. And you are coming. I'm talking to you. I like this girl. I like this girl. I will marry her in sharp corner. I will marry another one in a little Continue. By patient Jonathan. It is at old age. Because those children will take their mom and they will tell you that we don't want problem. We don't want one woman to come and charm our mother. Daddy, don't come to our place again. Polygamy is dangerous for the man. Let's not talk about the children now. There's a meeting God is putting in my heart. I've not told my wife. We have, we have, I, will, I will tell you when I'm ready. God said I should have five Fridays for all mothers 
We want to pray for our children. Five Fridays. But when the time ripe, I'll tell you. I received it when I was coming now. You know what I now learned from my father's case? I learned from my dad that I should develop friendship with my one wife to the extent that even the children will not be able to take her away from me. Do you know that that's possible? Ah. You'll be here, I can't leave my husband. Any. It's either you bring your children here, that your baby here for me to take care of. I can't leave my husband. Because somebody here, America, they have to look at you, America today. Even the children say, I, I know my mommy, you love her husband, but you can't leave her daddy. But you are there. And your brother to Yeke, ask now they like you, you are there. Oh, you are there. Yeah, let's take one more. Ah, time, time. The last one. From my dad, I learned that I should never sacrifice the education of my children for anything or anyone. Throughout our days, we are all, he has about 17 children from different mothers. My dad didn't pay any price for any child to go to school. It was mothers that raised their children on their own. So when he was sick, I was the only person it's, it's out of the whole 17, me and my, one of my brother, if they call us, financially will respond. But in Ibadan, all those in Ibadan, it is me they will wait for. Apart from my sisters, my brother that is an abroad. They were looking for who to call. Do you know what kept him waiting? 20,000. And my dad too, because of the way he has raised himself, had over, over 200,000 in his pocket that he wants to use for a Leah festival. Imagine the pastor, bo. He had over 4 million naira in his account. Nobody knows the ATM or password. When I got there, I went to quickly buy things. Get them, uh, you know, you know, get all the things the doctors needed. Bought them down. As they revive him, I was asking doctor, what do we do next? My daddy called his elder sister. Pastor Tibota. You know what I'm saying this part? There are some of you too, you are too secretive. If you don't change, Tom Kusibo, nobody will know. I read a story, I read a story on, online. A, a very wealthy man, the richest man in Europe. I want to try to remember his name. I forgot. I, I read it just three days ago. The richest man in Europe. He has a, a, a safe where he puts money in. Nobody knows that room. And they said anytime he travels, nobody used to know when he travels, nobody knows when he co comes in. That safe has only one door. Once you and you can only open it from outside. So he entered this particular day to go and take some money. The safe closed against him. Now, they told us that this man died of hunger. The richest man in the world died of hunger. Because the safe was so much, so built in such a way that nobody can hear any sound outside. He shouted, he screamed, he did everything, he died. It was two months after his death. That they discovered that his skeleton in that safe. Why? They said nobody knew when he goes out. Nobody knows when he comes in. He's so secretive that he doesn't tell people any, anything about himself. You know some of you are like that. Because my dad doesn't used to talk. We didn't know that he had money in his account. It is one, after his death that one of us, one of our, my brothers saw a lot. I took that alert. 
prepared death certificate, got a lawyer, went to fight the court. It was when I got there, I discovered I had more than that. And I had prepared death certificate already. And they said, the death certificate, the new money that I've just entered, he can't receive. Because those money came in after his death. So that part of alert, I said to my Bank I can't joke with you. There's one house at Ayegu. They told me that up to now they don't know who owns it. The man that built the house died in the house. Nobody knows his family. They buried him. The house is still there. Secret man. Abi, well, let's not go there. I'm talking about raising your children. He didn't invest in anybody. You know, we are not investing on them. Really affected everybody. When I fought the money out, brought it out of um, the bank, I was the only one that went to court, went to challenge the bank. When they were not even responding after I brought court judgment to them, I took my lawyer. We went to Wema Bank Gate. We went to make noise there. And we told them that if they are not going to respond, we are going to the EFCC. That was when they called me secretly. Hey, pastor, what do we do? We know we're a pastor. Can you push your lawyer aside? And things like They said so many things. I said, no, my lawyer is not going to go aside. My lawyer is going to be part of this deal. When they paid, we brought the money out. They used the money for a layer. <laughs> you know, I... I'm, well, I'm being watched. I may have some of them watching the service. But what am I looking at? My brothers, men and women, if you are going to raise a family, please raise one. And you'll be able to beat your chest that you raised a family. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Raise one. That you yourself will be able to beat your chest that I raised a family. I did my best. Today, no, none of us could go to none of us can go to his house. I can't go there. It's a polygamous house. Yes, it's five flats. I can't stay there. Who wants to die? Nobody wants to die. If you take polygamy team one day near, one of them called officers, and the way how that this house is, there's nobody enter the house. Nobody's you know how you say it in Yoruba. Pastor, what do we do? I said, I don't know. Call meeting. But I want us to learn. When they tell you, sister, stay one place, you will not hear. Brother, stay one place, you will not hear. Please learn this lesson. All the young girls that are here, listen, listen. I listened to Pastor Femi Manuel just this morning. What do you consider first in whom to marry? The first thing you should consider is, does he know God? Is there a proof in his life that he knows God? If you follow money, you are like my mother that was captured in the Biafran war. Who will not be Papa Mora? If he does not know God, listen, the devil can use him against you at any time. And if you are here too, you think that you will find love outside your relationship with God. Please, you better begin to change, reset your mindset. Look at that woman that died because they told her that her husband was going out with somebody. She carried car, she was running. Ah, my husband, my husband. She died in car accident. Find love and joy in where? In God. Oh, we have a child education. Are you blessed? You are angry. You are not clapping. Hey, uh. <laughs> well, we go to come. Clap for Jesus. Pick the lessons. Please, pick the lessons. When do we close on Bring those banners. Prepare your thanksgiving up as well. These instrumentalists did well. Let me clap for them. 
Yeah. It is well. You will have money. And God will give you good home. Your home will be balanced. In the name of Jesus. You want to, you know, you capture a more more. Eh, I'm a few power capture in your way. Black by your team back back for me. Two back by me, my flu, but the flu will capture. Will you my love way? But then it last. Be born again. Yak your long coat to life with one. Please, these banners, we have them, we have printed so many. We want people that will use it as publicity. If you have places in, around your house, around your business places, where you can tie it. That's why we have rope on the four places. On your, your office, your shop, it's for your, your street, just come. We'll give you. But make sure, please, once you receive it, don't go and keep it at home. We have members that does that. They will receive ambience like this. They will go and keep it. No. We want you to use it for publicity. We will print as many as possible. And you can start from you can start receiving it from today. Just get rope. Tie here, 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 and here. And let it be there. The Lord will honor you and prosper you mightily in Jesus. And do we have people that want to take this? Come. Hold. Thank you. 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 Bring it. Okay. Thank you. 